Well, it goes innovative, interesting, impressive, and then tat. Hi, it's me again, and I've got an interesting one for you here. I'm currently on the BBC Media Centre website, and they've got a few things about the BBC turning 100, right? Obviously, it's an important thing for them, not for me. But they've got a list here called BBC by the Decade, listing stuff that the BBC has done over its 100 years. And I thought it was interesting reading, because a lot of it is quite impressive. And at one point, I freely accept the BBC was the envy of the world. It really was. It was known around the world for its quality and its news production. But it's not anymore, is it? So I thought maybe by looking down this BBC by the decades thing, we can kind of see where it all went wrong for them and why the BBC currently, yeah, a bit of a laughing stock. Let's have a look. So as you can see here, look, in the 1920s, so 1922, BBC starts, pips begin transforming national timekeeping, blah, blah, blah. So in the 30s, the first TV service in the world and the first foreign language service with Arabic and 48 language services by the end of World War II. Quite impressive, I think you can all agree. I don't understand why in 1938 they needed all those languages, but they had them and that's okay. I wasn't there to complain about wasting my money at that point, so let's move on. So in 1942, Desert Island Discs was launched and has recently voted the top radio show. 1946, Women's Hour, giving women a voice, which was a big thing for 1946. Credit where credit due, BBC did do that. 1948, the first TV news. 1948, the first Olympic Games on TV, transforming its global impact. And in 1949, the first TV weather. So the 40s was, you know, that was a decade of big innovation and moving forward for the BBC, taking on the world, doing the first things that had been done in this zone in the world. Innovative and impressive. You know, credit where it's due, right? So on to the 1950s, and the Archers started, which is the longest running soap in the world. In 53 is the coronation of the Queen. In 58, Radiophonic Workshop, which was a cult innovation. Don't really know anything about that. And in 1958, Blue Peter, the longest running children's show in the world. So slacking a bit in the 50s, still recovering from all the good work they did in the 40s by the looks of it. Eh? So in 63, Doctor Who was launched. It's the longest running sci-fi show in the world. In 67, Our World was the first live international TV link-up. And the Beatles sang, love is all you need. In 67, BBC Two was in colour, the first in Europe. In 67, Radio One launched which was the first BBC service specifically for teenagers. And in 69, the moon, well, you can't really take credit for the moon landing. It wasn't really you. You may have broadcast it. I'm not giving you that one. I'm not giving you that one. But the 60s, more innovation there. Doctor Who is still world-renowned today. The first live international TV link-up. That's an impressive thing in 1967, right? I think that's impressive. BBC Two in colour is the first in Europe. Radio One launched the first specific BBC service for teenagers. All right. They were just playing catch-up on that because of all the pirate radio stations, weren't they? But still, they launched it. Another decade of fair innovation and a lot going on for the BBC. You know, credit where it's due again. In the 70s then, oh well, we started in 1977, so that doesn't bode well for innovation in the 70s, does it? Morecambe and Wise, 28 million watched their Christmas show, which has got to be... I mean, there's only, what is it, how many people in the UK now? All right, so in the UK now, there's 68 million, but it's also got the population for 1977, which is what we're talking about here, right? Yeah, Morecambe Wise, 1977. So the population was 56.19 million back then. And how many tuned in? 28 million. That is one serious percentage of the British population tuned in to watch the BBC on Christmas Day. Yeah, it's impressive. 1977, Top Gear, now a top global brand for the BBC. Yeah, but it wasn't then. It was, I like classic Top Gear. I've watched loads of it on YouTube, loads of the old Top Gear. But you can't say it's what Top Gear is today. It was very different. You know, they actually reviewed cars back then, showed you in the boot and everything they did. Quite good. I didn't know some of the people that actually presented Top Gear. Did Noel Edmonds was on there, wasn't there? Julia Bradbury was on there. Have a look, type in old or classic Top Gear or whatever onto YouTube. There's loads of clips. It's quite interesting. I quite like watching them. 
And in 1979, Life on Earth, which was the first Attenborough blockbuster. All right, well, they pulled back that decade because it didn't start till 77. Not a lot seemed to went on, but they pulled it back right at the end because Attenborough's a legend, isn't he? I mean, he bangs on a bit about climate change a bit too much nowadays for most people's liking. Even, uh, even Clarkson's having a pop of that in his recent column, wasn't he? But, you know, the Attenborough stuff is it's quality work, isn't it? It's quality. Right, on to the 1980s. Charles and Diana's Wedding, 750 million watch. If you can't take credit for that, it wasn't your production, was it? Although maybe you did produce it, I don't know. But it would have been under heavy, heavy supervision, wouldn't it? 1983, Breakfast Time, changing routines forever. See, they're innovating in the 80s, the first proper breakfast show, right, which is just the staple of the world now, isn't it? 1985, EastEnders, yeah, I wish they'd forgotten that one, personally. And Live Aid. Uh, they televised it, but they can't take credit for that. It wasn't organised by the BBC, was it? So, yeah, another weak decade, the 80s. If you notice things are starting to change from the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s, it's downhill with the innovation a bit now, isn't it? Yeah. The 80s wasn't good if EastEnders was on there. I mean, you take out Live Aid and Charles Diana's Wedding, and you're left with Breakfast Time and EastEnders. That was all their innovations for the 80s. It's not brilliant, is it? On to the 90s, Pride and Prejudice, which transformed costume drama. Yeah, credit where it's due. You can have that. You can have that. 97, BBC News 24. And in 97, bbc.co.uk launches On Air Becomes Online. You notice this, that there's starting to be less bullet points in each decade as well, right? We go back to the 40s. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six bullet points they pulled out there. 90s was three bullet points. We're on to the 2000s now. Two bullet points. So they're just resting on the laurels. They got lazy. They're not about innovation anymore. They're just getting lazy and just living off those license fees, aren't they? So 2004, Strictly becomes a global hit. I'll give you that. I don't like it, but yeah, I'll give you that. And in 2007, iPlayer launched. And again, you can have that. It's not a bad service. I can't say I've used it in a long time, so it might have got bad, but yeah. 2010's two bullet points in 2010. One of them is the Olympics, which wasn't really your production. Or was it? Because it was the London Olympics when they said the BBC might might be responsible for the production of that and then transferring those pictures to the broadcasters all around the world. Possibly. I'd have to check in on that. Uh, I'll, I'm going to have to give them it now, and I? And in 2018, BBC Sounds redefining audio. So two bullet points. Neither of them that interesting. right? You can, you, in the whole of the 2010s, Apart from the Olympics, the only innovation you come up with was BBC Sounds, which was an app for your radio stations, which you had in iPlayer anyway. So basically you did nothing through the 2010s, even though you sucked in all that money from poor licence fee players all that time. And now look, 2020s. 2022, BBC is the first major public broadcaster to mark 100 years of continuous broadcasting. And I wouldn't be surprised if we come back to this list in 2030, and that's still the only bullet point for the 2020s, would you? I find this interesting because they were the pride of the world. I'm, I can say that. It's no problem saying that. They were because they're not anymore. And look at the bullet points, the stuff they've done. And they're losing. They're losing, aren't they? Look, where's the innovation now? It's with Amazon Prime TV. It's with Netflix. It's with Disney+. Plus. It's with all these new streaming services. The BBC have lost their way. And problem is, that is where the innovation's going to lie forward for consuming broadcast media or TV or movies, whatever. Broadcast TV is dying. It's dying. And that's where the BBC have got all their eggs in that one basket. Bye, BBC. So what do you think about this then? I thought it was quite interesting to look at. Can you think of any other BBC highlights from throughout the decades? Because, yeah, they were innovative and they were the pride of the world at one point. They're just not anymore. Arlo. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because that way, hopefully, I'll see you in another video again soon. Ta-da.